Hey guys, it's Gabby. I am bringing you chapter seven of Tiger Tutor Delivery Girl, The Caneo Grave. This chapter was a lot of fun to write because this is where I really felt like I got my groove writing about uh, LA and Ventura County and writing about the actual physical space of being here. Um, that felt like it was a lot of fun because I felt like I was grounding the story at, into some sort of reality that I was creating and that was a blast. So I can't wait to have you check out, uh, you know, the chapter that I've whipped up for you and also some of the test footage that I've been trying out in Unity and learning. Um, so I am really excited. Check it out. Tiger Tutor Delivery Girl, Chapter 7, The Caneo Grade All of our shit went into the back of Crazy Eight's mobile junk caravan, including Jules's bike. When it was all done, Eight punched the coordinates into the GPS, and his whole fleet of automatic trash trucks fell in line behind the trailer. I thought back to Duke Ellington back at the nightclub. We were quite the caravan. Even given the sprawl of Los Angeles... The city fell away, surprisingly quick, on the road out to the valley. It was almost like the city had grown around the void of the San Fernando Valley, like a body around a tumor, because the only way in or out nowadays was the grade. I'd seen pictures online of the Caneo grade from the last century. Even before it was a smog, congested stretch of traffic on the 101, the highway was part of the El Camino Real which connected all the Spanish missions in the old California Republic. I can't imagine what they saw all the way out here, a sea of dead earth, jackrabbits, and cactus, as far as you could see for miles. But I could tell you that they wanted to bring Jesus to it. Eight's usually silent trailer wheezed as he pushed up the grade. Fuck it all, Eight said, slapping his dashboard. He was usually quiet too, so I figured something was up. What's going on? I said, coming to the front. Here, sit down for a moment. He waved me down into the passenger seat. The engine's having trouble getting up the incline. I listened to the waxing and waning of the electric engine, taxed to its limit. Can your whole fleet get up this hill? Fleet's not an issue. He cranked his seat closer to the steering wheel. It's just a trailer. She's old. Maybe we just take her up slow? I started to troubleshoot unhelpfully, thinking about all those old petrol head movies. Do you have another gear or something? There was a sound of thunder in the cliff face above us. Then, something the size of a moped bike embedded itself into the road in front of us. Eight slammed down on the brakes as I grabbed the seatbelt, glad I was already sitting down. The fuck? I said. What, already? Jules said, coming up to the front. She opened up the charging cabinet and pulled out a rifle. Already, Eight replied, pulling up his sun visor. All right, buy some time, mate, Jules said, heading down the steps to the door. Where are you going? I asked, noticing that there was a vehicle-sized harpoon lodged in the ripped-up highway in front of us. To greet the welcoming committee, she said, cocking the rifle. Jules then yanked open the plastic door and slung her skinny leg into the safety strap next to it. She used it like a fulcrum to swing out of the trailer and send a molten slug of light into the side of the mountain. The cliffside exploded spectacularly, shooting ochre-colored dust and dried rock everywhere. Ooh, boy, Eight said to himself, leaning over the steering wheel to admire her work. Look at her go. Let's get a move on it, Eight, Kim shouted from the back of the trailer. Yes, ma'am, Eight said, taking his foot off the gas. You holding on, Jules? Jules hooked her arm around the safety strap and nodded back to him. I felt a sick lurch in my stomach. You might want to get behind something, Lyle, Eight said, as the car began to lurch between park and go. I dove out of the passenger seat as Eight gunned it around the harpoon and further up the grade. 
The trailer fishtailed nauseatingly at the end of the highway, sending a guardrail sailing off the road. Then the speed finally kicked in. There she is, Eight said, banging on the dashboard. Ah, oh, fuck, Jules shouted, swinging dizzyingly out of the trailer by a safety strap. What? One of H trucks just went off the road. I think that was the one with my bike in it. Jules swore, but the wind took most of it. It's just stuff, Jay, Kim said, making her way towards the gun cabinet. She started to search for a charged up gun as we heard more volleys come down off the cliffside. Harpoons, Moby Dick motherfuckers, you've got to be kidding me. Jules fired off a few more rounds into the cliffside behind us to give us cover. She ducked inside with a sour expression on her face. I'm not much of a delivery girl without a bike, am I? I'll make you a new one, Jules. We got nothing but time and parts, Eight soothed her. I wish he'd soothe me like that a little bit more often. Or anyone, really. That's if we don't lose your fleet trying to get off the grade, Jules groused. We have more to worry about getting off this grade alive first, Kim said, pointing to the windshield at the cars cresting up the hill ahead. Hey guys. I hope you really liked that. This was a really fun chapter to bring you. I cannot wait to show you more of these little still animations that I'm creating in Unity and also more of these chapters. Um, let me know what you think below and let me know what your favorite part of the chapter was or a line. I'd love to chat. You can always find me on Yay Yankee at Twitter and also at gschlack at medium.com where all the chapters are located if you want to stay up to date. I'll catch you guys later. See ya.